All right, in this video, I'm going to talk about how I use the new Betaflight 4.3 slider system to tune using PID Toolbox. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to tune the P to D balance. And the way we do that, we're going to remove factors that could confound our understanding of the results. So we're going to pull feed forward out of the equation by pulling it down to zero. We're going to make sure that dynamic damping is set to zero because we don't want a dynamic D term when we're trying to find out what the optimal D gain is. And thirdly, we're going to pull I term out of the equation because we don't want overshooting from I term to confound what we're actually looking at. For, so for the set of PD balance tests, what we're going to do is we're going to vary the damping slider. And when we do that, what you'll notice is that D gain is slowly, will slowly be ramped up while P is held constant. And this will be effectively changing the P to D balance. So for, for a typical 5 inch, usually about 0.6 is a good place to start. And we're just going to raise this on each test by steps of 0.2. So we're going to go from 0.6 to 0.8 to 1.0, 1 1.2, 1.4, and possibly 1.6. All right. So as you can see, I'm going to do these tests here in my basement. And you can see I'm just going to arm the copter and just basically move it around on the roll and pitch axis. I'm giving a pretty good input here. I've, I've posted other videos about how exactly to make this fairly safe. Um, so I limit the, the, the rates. I usually set up what I call a line of sight rate system where it's limited to a maximum of, a, of about 200 degrees per second. And I set it to linear. It sounds like it would be really sharp linear, but when you're only when you only have a maximum of 200 degrees per second, linear is actually pretty good. So it allows you to get some pretty good solid input, but not uh, have the copter get too far out of control. So you know, not everybody's going to be able to do this. This is something maybe for for a lot of other people you might want to do it out in a backyard or in a larger space. Just keep that in mind. So then we're going to go ahead and load in that data set. Just going to select, and then we're going to navigate to those files. Now we're going to trim our log files so that we remove any data that we don't want from the start or the end of the file where we might have bumped something. So we're just going to select this button now and find our start point, and the end point probably around here is decent. And then we're just going to go to the next file and do the same thing. Okay, and once we're done that, we're gonna deselect that button and then head on over to the step response tool. Then we're just gonna grab these files, select them all, and click run. Now for the most part, this looks really good. Sometimes if you get this DC offset, sometimes it helps to use the Y correction. Okay, so now you can see that as we increase the D term, we're changing the P to D balance, and you can see then a systematic change in the response curves here on roll and pitch. Now from looking at these curves, I think it's pretty clear that probably around number three is about right. Once we get to the point where the overshoot just disappears, then that's, that's enough. We, if we keep going further, what you'll notice is that the curves start to even dampen more and sort of get an over dampened response. Like sometimes it helps to just remove some of the data points. So let's just plot these three, for example, the three middle ones. And now it gets clearer. You can see now that certainly the, this this one is not the right one, so we're just going to plot these two. And now you can see that there's no added benefit in going with the red curve. The brown is pretty much doing the job. So that would be number three, PD balance of 1.0, basically the default. So with that balance, 45 to 30, we're going to go ahead now and start tuning I term. Now the effects of iTerm are much more subtle, so we're going to want to make bigger steps. Um, what I recommend usually is fairly low value to start, so somewhere around 0 0.3, and going up by steps of 0.3 as opposed to 0.2 that we did with the damping. This seems to work pretty well for 5-inch copters. This may differ for different rigs, depending on the size and the uh, power to weight ratio you may find some better step sizes. So I'm going to just, I'm going to leave that to your discretion. You know, it's something that you have to play around with to try to find out where if you make these steps too small, then you may not notice, you may be in the noise. You may not be able to notice the, the subtle difference between the, between the curves and that's going to lead to some confusion. And so you can always interpolate between a curve, but you can't make sense of things when you have two curves that overlap. So what I would recommend is 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 
1.9, 1.2, maybe 1.5, but steps of 0 0.3 at least on, on I term. All right, so we're going to go back to PID toolbox and now we're going to load in those I term tests. So PI balance tests. Again, we're going to navigate to those files and then we're going to start trimming them. This is certainly a lot faster than it used to be plugging in numbers manually. And then we're going to deselect that again, go to our step response tool, and now we're going to select these guys. And again, we'll, we'll use the Y correction here. Okay, so what do we notice here? So we can see that for, for the first test, there's the brown curve. We can see the, the response looks pretty solid. And we increase the I term in red, and it's pretty much the same. But then when we go from number two to number three, there's a clear jump. This is, this is the effect of I term now coming in and sort of summing together with P term, which is starting to, again, push the, push the system slightly to an o towards overshoot. I think number two is pretty good. So P and I are about the same. So our optimal I term we've assessed to be somewhere around 0 0.6 for this copter. So we're gonna just lock that in. All right, so now we're gonna move on to our gain test. So PID gain, the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna manipulate the master multiplier. All right, now that we've got our PD balance adjusted and our PI balance adjusted, we're gonna start going steps of 0.2 starting at 1.2. We've already got data from 1.0, of course. So we're gonna go to 1.2, 1 1.4, 1 1.6, 1 1.8, and for good measure, we'll do 2.0 if possible. Okay. So let's go ahead again and open that data. Okay, so we go down to our list. Again, we're going to select the start and end points. This is all really good movement on the roll and pitch axis. This looks pretty good. You can already see, even without plotting the step response curves, you can actually just look at this and see how tightly this is coupled. This is, this is really getting good. So let's go in here and take a look. We're gonna select these guys. Again, we'll go with the Y correction. Now you look at this and, you know, sometimes this is a bit underwhelming for some people. They'll go, well, nothing has changed. Well, of course, at this point, you don't want anything to change in terms of the, the shape of the curve. This is what's wonderful about the system, right? Once you get these balances set, then you can just start multiplying it up by the, by the uh, master multiplier. And the responses say the same. What's changing, though, is you'll notice the curve is slowly getting earlier and earlier. And that's really nicely represented here in the latency. See that? And you can see that by about number four to five, it looks like it's pretty much asymptoting. This is what we say, it plateaus. It, the response to the system is not, not really gaining you much, if anything, by going to the next level. So at this point, everything here is pointing to the optimal being somewhere around number four. Now, if you want it to be on the safer side of a tune, you might want to back it off a little bit more. That's certainly up to you. But if you're on the cutting edge, you really want to push this thing to its, to its, to its limit then I would say number four is, is your best bet here, especially on, on pitch for sure. There's certainly a big advantage in latency that jumps here about two milliseconds. It's a little more subtle here. So one might, for example, choose number four here and maybe, maybe number three on roll. So the pitch to roll is, the roll to pitch ratio is gonna be, should be a little bit different on a freestyle copter, depending on the amount of weight that you have distributed across the pitch axis. But nonetheless, you know, um, I think I'm fine to go with number four here. So we're just going to lock that in. Now, the other thing you want to think about when tuning the PID gains is you want to look to see if there's any oscillation that's occurring as a result of turning those gains up too high. The way I do that is I go into the spectral analyzer. And I just plot the gyro for now. What you'll find sometimes is when the gains start getting high, you'll start to hear this trilling sound. Now, long before you even hear the trilling sound, you're going to actually see a peak begin to emerge somewhere between 40 to about 70 hertz. And this peak, you'll see it systematically changing with gain. If it's systematically changing with gain, then you know for sure then that you have an oscillation that's starting. And in fact, you can see this in the trace itself if you zoom in on portions of the, of the gyro itself. In my data, you can see that that's not an issue. So there's no, no obvious peak that's showing up here as a result of gains even as high as 2.0.
The only other thing I look at is the overall noise, and I like, I like to make sure that the noise floor is generally below minus 30 for the gyro. And then we'll just go ahead and plot D term. And, and what I look for here is to make sure that the signal is below about minus 10. That's just a generally a good rule of thumb. Certainly if D term is getting up above zero, you might want to really think about how you're filtering or whether or not, you, especially if you have an oscillation that's popping up there above that point, this could really lead to a flyaway situation or could certainly be causing motors to get really hot. So be wary of that as you start to crank up these gains. Now there is an interesting relationship between the amount of filtering and the kind of oscillation that you get down here at this, this 40 to 60 hertz range. So it's, it's kind of counterintuitive, but the more filtering, the greater the probability of this oscillation. And that's because uh, the more filtering, you start adding filter delay. Without going into detail, there's a kind of interesting interaction that causes the, the, the oscillation to, to, to go up a lot sooner. So in other words, the more filtering, often you can't push your gains quite as high. So, yeah, I've gone into some detail in that in previous videos. I'm not going to talk about it here, but this all looks pretty good for our, for our purpose. So up to this point, I haven't said anything about yaw, but I think I'm going to leave that for a future video because I'm still really thinking about how to optimize the tuning of yaw, even using the slider system, for example. What we've done up to this point is basically kept yaw out of the, out of the measure here. You could certainly just do this entire process with roll pitch and yaw on and, and then as you increase the master multiplier yaw would just come along for the ride and, and the gains would also increase but i think um i think for i'll leave that for a future video where i'll start looking at tuning p and i for yaw remember these things I'm, i i mentioned for you to turn down but you can bring these back to your the desired level wherever you want them i'm not going to say anything about stick response you want to turn feed forward gains up you can certainly bring it back to uh the default setting of 1.0 is absolutely fine read a little bit about what uh, the jitter reduction is and smoothness this kind of stuff is going to be important if you if you're using lots of feed forward so just, just look at the data tips over here and uh yeah until next time happy tuning